Hi, hi guys, so I'm going to read the Green Lantern story in All-American Comics number 20. So, The Green Lantern by Mark Dellen and Bill Finger. Many years ago in China, a meteor crashed and burst into a weird green flame, which spoke to the people. Three times shall I flame green. First to bring death, second to bring life, third to bring great power. A lamp was made of the flaming metal by an old Chinese man. It fulfilled its first prophecy by bringing death to the men who killed him. Years later, the lamp was found by a lunatic who transformed it into a, lan a train lantern. By returning it, his reason uh, it brought him a new life. When Alan Scott found the lantern, it spoke again and revealed its secret to bring him power to be able to streak through the air to be immune to all metals, to walk through the obstacles. These and other supernatural gifts are his. When he wears a ring <coughs> made of part of the lamp, a ring that must touch the lamp once every 24 hours to retain its potency. By use of this ring and his own willpower, Alan Scott becomes the scourge of all evil and evildoers, becomes known as the Green Lantern. As a man steps from a building, a machine gun opens fire on him from a speeding car. With a burst of speed, the car roars, roars away, leaving a bullet-riddled corpse behind. Newspapers shout their headlines to avid readers. So Daily Call, radio announcer, machine gun to death. Jim Tellum of Apex Broadcasting Systems is victim of an unknown, unknown assailant. Why was Jim Tellum killed? This is the question police are asking themselves as the mystery of... Dot, dot, dot. In his sanctum, a man scans the news with unusual interest. He is Alan Scott, otherwise known as the Green Lantern. Hmm, a radio announcer killed by a machine gun. A gangster's weapon. Very peculiar. Shedding his clothes, he dons a strange attire. This bears investigation. I think I'll play, pay a flying visit to the dead man's uh, widow. There is a sudden blaze of light as the all-powerful ring touches the green lantern. Wave upon wave of energy courses through his form as once more he becomes the green lantern. And I shall shed my light over dark evil, for the dark things cannot stand the light, the light of the green lantern. Moments later, the weird figure plummets down to a rooftop. What? Who? Don't be frightened. I'm the Green Lantern. I'm here to help you. Have you any idea who might have killed your husband? Sure I know who killed him. Jim? Uh, or who killed Jim? The boss. That's who. The boss. Jim wanted to quit the racket. But directly across the street, then without warning... Jim told me he was going to quit that night, and then, oh, bang. Poor thing. She's dead. That th shot must have come up from across the street. Ah, uh, there's the men who did it now. As the killer speeds away in his car, the Green Lantern follows in grim pursuit. A green ray of light suddenly leaps at the car. The motor falters, and the car comes to a dead stop. What the? The motor must have stalled. I better get out and take a look at it. Ugh! You, you dirty killer. Why did you kill that woman? Talk, man. Why did you do it? Well, I was supposed to shut her up so she wouldn't talk. It was the boss's orders. Where, who is this boss? Where is his hideout? So me, I don't know. I got my orders by mail. I was to get a hundred bucks for killing that woman. That was my first job for the boss outfit. Honest. He's telling the truth. He's too scared to do otherwise. This is going to be your last job for this boss, or any other boss. The Green Lantern puts through a phone call in his own imminable manner. Police headquarters? Mrs. Jim Tellum is being murdered a half hour ago. If you'll trace this phone call, you'll find the killer tied up on the road. Goodbye. But Mrs. Tellum was not yet dead. The police arrive at her home in time to hear the dying woman babble one word repeatedly. She just keeps saying the same word over and over. Tops, 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 oh, tops. Wonder what it means. She's gone. 
Next day, Alan Scott once more gazes upon the startling news. Mrs. Tellum keeps repeating the same word, tops. Tops, hmm. Radio announcer, radio, tops. Mm, radio. Apex Broadcasting System. I'm a radio engineer. If I could get a job at Apex, I might be able to get some helpful clues on this case. And come to think of it, working for a radio broadcasting system will be a great help to me. And all of my activities is the Green Lantern. I'll get all the news reports firsthand. Hmm. Accordingly, we found Alan Scott speaking to a Mr. Gates, assistant manager at the broadcasting studio. I'm very sorry, Mr. Scott. There is no openings at present, but you can leave your name and address. All right, Mr. Gates, I'll do that. Thank you again, Mr. Gates. If there's anything open, I'll let you know. Good day. At, as Alan exits from the office, Oops, well, I'll be Irene Miller, the fair one from the World's Fair. So that was, I think they met two issues ago in number 18, I think. Uh, yeah, but it was in, it's in my playlist anyway. Alan Scott, you find out where I worked and came to see me. How nice. Well, or not exactly. I came to see Mr. Gates about a job here. A job? And I thought you came to see me. My charm must be slipping anyway. How have you been? Do anything exciting lately? Subtly, skillfully, Alan shifts their talk to the murder case, and the papers say she kept repeating the same word, tops. wonder what she meant. Tops, tops, tops toothpaste. Tell him used to announce that program every night. Tops toothpaste, that's the clue. Irene, I wonder what your dream man, the Green Lantern, would do in a case like this. Why, he would probably go to the tops toothpaste outfit and see what's what, which gives me an idea. What say you and I go over and investigate Top's toothpaste ourselves right now? I'll be through here in a few minutes. Fine, this is my chance to prove that I'm just as good as that Green Lantern chap any time. The Top's toothpaste location. Rather a small place for a concern that used to uses a nationwide hookup. The problem, uh, that program cost them plenty of money. I don't understand it. As they enter a shabby office, Alan is suddenly aware that all is not well. Yes, what can I do for you? Why, nothing. I believe this is the wrong place. Er, yes, we made a mistake. I say you made a mistake. I've seen you before. You're from the radio station, and you've come to snoop around. Hey, what the? Snoopers, eh, Duke? What do we do with them? Tie them up and put them in separate rooms in the back. Gotcha, Duke. You're making sure they ain't helping each other to get away. Alan is tied and thrust into a small room away from Irene. Click. Lock that door. Don't worry, Duke. Nobody can get out of that room. Swiftly, Alan presses the ring upon his finger, and the false top rolls back, revealing the green lantern ring. Alan directs the light of the ring to, to his, on his bonds, and a few moments is free. So nobody can get out of here, eh? Peeling off of outer clothing, Alan Scott is revealed as his other self, the Green Lantern. Now we'll see if the Green Lantern can't get out of here. Master of the Fourth Dimension, the Green Lantern walks through the door. That fellow was talking through his hat. Voices. Okay, put on the radio. It's almost time. Right, Duke. As is our daily custom, I now read a letter from a user of Topps Toothpaste, Mrs. Ida Finch. Of 28845 Clove Street, Denver, Colorado. Says, I use tops because... What a guy, the boss is. Imagine using the radio to tell the boys all over the country what to do. Tops keeps my teeth clean. Tops is tops with me. Uh, just uh, think every time they read a tops fan letter, it's really a messaging code. Toothpaste, Ty, what a laugh. The boss sure is smart, you know. I ain't even seen the guy once. It'll only Duke knows who he is. So that's it. The boss uses the program as a front to send coded orders to his henchmen all over the country. Neat. Very neat. Okay, boys, I got the message decoded. It's for us. We go down to Pier 14 and help unload the stuff that's been smuggled in. Okay, Duke. I'll get the rest of you, the boys. 
As Sakaar speeds towards the pier, a fantastic figure follows above. The Green Lantern. They didn't, didn't invite me, but I'll tag along anyway. Gosh, this silk is heavy. Hurry it up. The truck will be here any moment. Hello, boys. Need any help? Huh? Who's this guy? The costume. It's the Green Lantern. The Green Lantern. Shoot. Even as shots rain at him, the mantled figure swings out over the ship. Get that guy. The flying form slams into the rope net and sends the bolts of silk toppling. Bullseye. Pow. A hail of heavy bolts crashes down on the men. Blam. Sock. Pow. Wouldn't that, like, kill them, though? Like, I don't know. But disregarding bullets, the Green Lantern plays a ray of dazzling light upon the steel hull of the snuggling ship. He shouldn't drop, but he don't. He ain't human. Like an acetylene torch, the ray of the ring eats through the steel. Water rushes in the gap. The boat starts to sink. The boat's sinking. Dive. Get off. Suddenly, I knew these shots came from here. There they are. Cops, scram! Let us let me get out of here. Not so fast, Duke. You and I have to talk things over. Huh? They say it isn't the fall that kills, Duke. It's a sudden stop. I'll test that theory on you. Unless you talk, and there are a lot of things I want you to tell me. No, no! Moments later, a figure upon a window ledge on at the Apex Broadcasting System. Greetings, Gates. What? Who? Duke talked. Gates, alias the boss, he gave me a full confession of your activities and why you had Tellum killed. Why the dirty rat squealed, I'll... I'll kill you, you... No, 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 it, this is that nice. It may interest you to know, Gates, I switched on the dictaphone while I talked. The record holds your confession of guilt. I'll smash it! Uh, oh, uh. This ought to put you in cold storage for a while. Whack. That's it, that. Now to get back to Irene. Entering the building where he was first taken prisoner, the Green Lantern once more becomes Alan Scott. Poor Irene must be frantic with worry now. Uh, or, oh well, now to put the rest of my little plan to work. A moment later. Alan, you're free. How? I managed to wiggle out of my ropes and jimmy the lock with a nail file. I'll have you free in a jiffy. Nobody here. What do we do now? I think it would be a good idea and get back and tell an executive like like Mr. Gates all about the Topps Toothpaste Company. He should know everything. But later, as Irene opens the door to Gates' office, she gets a decided shock. Alan, look! Mr. Gates, all tied up! Fancy that. Look, this card. It says this is the man responsible for Tellum's death. Play the dictaphone record. It will explain everything. My, my, how mysterious. Look, a small lantern imprinted on his jaw. The Green Lantern's been here. Gosh, you don't say. As later as the police listened to the Green Lantern's message on the dictaphone, Gates hired Tellum to read the coded letters. When Tellum tried to quit, Gates was afraid he might talk and had him killed. He was. And the next day, and the president of the company says there is a job due you as a compensation for the risk you took with me. That's swell. Everything's okay now. I got a job and the Green Lantern solved another, another case. The Green Lantern, what a man. You know, I wonder what he if he would like my type. Why not? I like it. And what's good enough for me ought to be good enough for any old Green Lantern. Out of the night appears a fantastic figure. A figure devoted to stamping out all evildoers. He is the Green Lantern. Follow his further and ex exciting and weird adventures each month in all American comics. So, that's the end of uh, the comic. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you could like, comment, and subscribe, uh, that would be much appreciated. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later.